Hi, I'm Jan. I wanted to sh make this video to show the granular pure data system that I've made that I've got on GitHub. So first quickly show it in action. Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's a PD patch for granular synthesis um, made in Pure Data PD. Uh, it's all in vanilla PD, so that means you can run it on any devices without any externals, so Raspberry Pi, etc. Um, it has lots of controls. You can sample into it like I did, just did, but you can also load sound files in. You can do some live granular stuff. It's not great yet, but I'm working on that. Um, and you can have multiple instances running at once, and it's quite easy to make your own interfaces for it. Um, so I'll just jump right in. If you open up the main.pd file that's here, you'll see something like this. Um, so this is what it'll start out with. Um, and this is this sort of section where you load or record sounds in. Um, so when you click record, it'll start recording immediately. And then when you stop record, it'll automatically set the length of time to that amount of time. So to do it again, zoop, doop, doop, bop, boop, 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 boop. there we go. So you can see the sound is there um, and it's all recorded. I'm recording in mono, but you can switch it over to stereo or mid side. It just uses the first two inputs on your audio device. You can monitor it too, if you like, that'll cause all sorts of issues if I do that now. Um, there's a maximum currently of 10 seconds of um, sampling time. You could extend that if you dig into the patch a bit more, but I've found that to be fine for now. Uh, and if you ever want to start over completely, you click clear array like I did earlier, and that just makes it completely empty. And we can load a sound file and I can show that later. Um, then to actually play the sound, um, you can click this on off toggle. <laughs> and it'll start playing it. So. The first main control is this sample offset. So that play that selects where in the sample um, the main kind of grain control is. So if you move it back and forth, you'll kind of hear it moving through the sound. Um, and you can randomize that with this slider. So the more you move this up, the more uh, distance between the grains I mean, among the sound file there is. So you'll start hearing it picking grains from all over the place. So when it's at the maximum, when the offset random is at the maximum, it's picking sound, sound grains from the entire section of sound that you've recorded. Um, you can also have these two reverse settings. So if you click reverse, then every single grain that's playing back will be played in reverse, uh, which with this current setting, you'll probably hear quite quick. <laughs> Not the most obvious with that sound file. If you put um, reverse random in, then it'll just randomize about, I can't remember, about half of the... Um, of the sound. So this becomes much more obvious if you do more transient sounds like this. There we go. Um, so then, of course, uh, like all um, granular, like many granular systems, there's a pitch and a randomized pitch system. Uh, so I'll just record a new sound in here. I'm just going to bring my randomization down. And if you want to, this is the volume control. If you want to uh, reset the pitch, just click on this button. And then 
then similar to the offset randomization, there's a pitch randomization, so each grain will be uh, pitched at a random distance. <laughs> So they're, they're dependent on each other, so if you have a really low your pitch random range will be lower. And similarly, if you have a so you can kind of work with those things um, together. Um, then you have three uh, grain settings. Um, so size is the size of each grain that's played back, so each tiny little snippet of sound. <laughs> so you can hear the difference there. When it's very small, you only hear tiny little... When it's bigger, it starts picking out different sections of the sound. Density is basically how often they're triggered. And it's very regular. It's just like how how many uh, milliseconds or even sub milliseconds there are in between each um, sound, each trigger of a of a of a grain. And so that's kind of you kind of want to balance that between the grain size. You can kind of imagine it. The grain size is this big. You may not want to have them triggering all on top of each other. You may want to have a bit more space. So you can kind of balance the two together. I'll do that a bit now. It almost becomes more like a sample trigger. And then the third thing I've did, done to kind of lean into that a bit more is to make a grain play chance control. So that means uh, every time there's the potential to trigger a grain, um, it's run through this kind of chance mechanism that says how often, uh, how, how likely it is that the grain is going to be played. So normally for a standard granular system, you'd have that at 100% up here. But if you have it lower, down to fifty percent, then maybe half of them won't trigger. Now, if you have the grain density quite low, it means you get some kind of uneven triggering, which can make some kind of quite fun effects. So um, you can kind of balance those things however you like. Now, uh, over here, you have an autoplay function. What this is, does is it plays that this um, what you've recorded on loop and with whatever settings you have here. So you can get some fun effects. Um, there appears to be no effects. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> okay, so make sure you turn it on. Right, I forgot to turn it on. So make sure you turn it on before you have the, or the autoplay is reliant on the on and off being on. Um, so you can have quite a range of effects here. You can make it all the way down so that it sounds quite similar to the original recording. If you want that, you kind of play around with these grain size and grain density uh, settings. So I'll try to do that. Okay, so that's pretty close. And now I can change the speed so that it's slower than the original. Okay, so that's sort of Ableton kind of style thing. 
or faster. And then, because it's granular, the fun part is that you can control the pitch separately. There you go. Okay. So uh, you can also load a sound in yourself if you like. Um, so I'll show you that quickly. Choose sound. Um, it's quite obvious. It's sort of what you would imagine. Uh, let's put some bees in. Here we go. Yeah, granular bees, not the best sound to choose, but there you go. Um, I'll record a new sound in. There we go. Okay. Now, the fun thing that you can also do with this patch is once you have a canvas open like this, um, you can make another version of it. So you just say ys.granular underscore main and you have to give it a number so each one each instance has to have a different number so we'll say two there it is and now i can record another sound in there we go Okay, so that's fun. And you can have as many of those as your computer can handle. Um, and then the extra fun part uh, for me was finally putting together a little help file. Um, so each of the patches has this help file in it that should explain what's going on. The, mo the main thing to know that might be useful is that everything has a naming convention to it. So each one of these controls can be accessed without this GUI, if you like, by using this type of thing. So send dollar one being the um, argument name that you gave it up here. So one for this first one and two for this second one. Um, could probably use anything, but I would suggest using a number. And then when you use it, you can actually see over here, my sample offset is moving when I move this. So you can make your own GUI for it if you like, or you can make you can make your own MIDI control system or anything that just uses that as a separate patch. It's probably a lot easier than trying to hack into um, my patch. Um, and yeah, so there you go. So this is the list of all of the different controls with a few extra over here that you can access. Um, and if you like, you can make your own little um, set of parameter control numbers that this that that um, for controlling just using message boxes like this so hopefully this help file is useful for you and that's pretty much it I think that is this thing so let me know if you have any questions my email address or website is down here just get in touch email address is up here and that's this patch thanks for watching <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.